everybody, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer, and welcome to a new playthrough video. Today I am playing Final Girl. Uh, today's bad guy is Inkinyamba, Inkinyamba the Avenger. He is like an African god, I believe. And I am playing for the location, the Storybook Woods. This is normally for the Big Bad Wolf or the Werewolf. Uh, so I'm mixing these two up. Uh, with Inkinyamba comes two special cards. They have a cost of two time. They're called Atonement, and they are to uh, increase or decrease the Killer Wrath. So um, it starts at 2, <laughs> so that's easy enough. Um, during his Killer Phase, if the Atonement is at 1 to 2, which it is, you increase it by 1, uh, by one and then you kill a victim in your space. So it starts at 2. And uh, let's see, what else? I think that is it. I've got the victim set up with the setup card. I have not drawn the first event card. I also have not, I've shuffled the terror cards. I didn't draw the hit the health. So underneath these nine tokens, there are three special ones. I just pulled three to, as an example. One will have one heart underneath it, one will have two, and one will have three. The rest have none. So what I'm going to do is shuffle these up. And I pick one at random for the final girl and one at random for the big bad. Oops, I hate. This is one of the mechanisms of board games when you're trying to keep things uh, secret and you just, you got to mix them up and hopefully, I'm just going to look up and go real careful and try not to do it. Did I do it? Yeah. All right, so I pick one and I will pick this one for me and I'll pick this one for the killer. And then Barbara, I'm going to be playing Barbara today. She has seven hearts. So this counts as one. So you get one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if she were to lose seven health, she would lose these six, and I would reveal this. So that's how that works. Um, and I think we are ready to go. I get started with, let me put these over here so I don't accidentally tip them over and see them. Uh, oh, I need to draw an event card. Let's do that. So the event card, you always draw one at the beginning of the game, and it's usually not good. It usually starts the tone of the game in a bad way. Fairy ring. All victims at the Glen disappear. Where is the Glen? You gotta be kidding me. The Glen is where five victims are. All of them disappear. Remove them from the game. Do not increase blood loss. Well, I guess that's one good thing. They won't increase this. But now there's fewer victims to rescue, which is not good. All right. Um, well, that, And then it says discard this. All right, so discard it. All right. On my turn, I get my starting hand of six zero-cost cards. Timer starts at six. The horror track starts at four, based on this. And it is time to go. I'm going to play Focus, which is my... I usually try to get the horror track down to the green, which gives me uh, an extra die to roll instead of two. So my normal contribution is short rest and weak attack to make one of the... to make a uh, two-card icon like that one into a star. One star says I can lower this by one, and I lose a time, so I'm down to five. All right, let's do another Focus. I got one star, which allows me to drop this again, and I lose a time. And all the cards I use go in this discard pile right here, and they will eventually return to the tableau here where I can buy them. I've got two walks, so let's do a walk. Now, there's a rule. The, see the river that comes through here? There are bridges where I can cross, but only one victim can follow me over a bridge, not two. Apparently, they're rickety. So the escape places are here, here. Are there only the two? There are. There are only two escape places. All right. So let's do a walk and see what we can do here. I got a single star, which will allow me to move one space and burn a time. Well, I will move... Huh. I want to get away from the... I'm going to move uh, here with this one. That's the best I can do. Normally, I would hold my extra walk, um, and which I'm going to do. I'm going to stop now, and with the remaining time I have, which is four, I can buy cards based on their cost. 
So for the four, I want to buy a Sprint for two. And for the remaining two, I want to buy a... Well, I really can't buy much else, so I will buy another Sprint. And that knocks me down to zero. The cards in the discard area go back into the tableau for later. They're cost zero, so I'll always get them back uh, up to a maximum hand size of 10. And then these are my cards for the next round. This resets to six, and it is now the bad guy's turn. All right, Inkanyamba. His, his Killer Wrath starts at two, um, which... Uh, increase that by two. Oh yeah, that's something different. Okay, so um, this actually really only works with the other. That's interesting. But this does matter because it will change this. So never mind. All right. Um, let's see. His turn. If wrath is two, which it is, it's set to two level two. Increase it by one. This drops by one. And then he will stab in his space. Well, there's nobody in his space. Now, after the killer's turn, he draws a terror card. Unleash that. All right, so the unleash, um, we're not actually doing that part. The unleash is part of the other, um, the other land, so I don't even have to worry about that. So increase equal to the bloodless level. So that's good. This is not really going to matter because it, it, it requires you to do the leash and unleash, and that's part of the other half of this game, uh, the, the location that's normally with Ink and Yamba. So I don't have to do that. However, he does have to target the nearest victim, which is right here. He moves, and he stabs. This one's dead, which pushes Bloodlust up one. Uh, and it says if there are no victims, target the final girl instead. So he targets her. This goes here, and now it is my turn. Okay, all I've got is a sprint, a walk, and a walk. Let's do the walk and try to just get hit, get her, this one. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I did not get anything. <laughs> so uh, I can choose to move one space, lose a heart, which I will do, and then uh, lose two times. So I'm okay with that. I tell her to get lost. I can put it on my card. Barbara has five special places. Um, I'm going to put it on... Uh, I'm going to put it on the mask to lower this back by one because I really like to, to do three dice. The walk is done. Now I need to sprint. And I got one star, which allows me to move two spaces. So I'm going to go one... Hmm. There's the bridge. So hmm. I'm going to go one, two, and then I'm going to play my other sprint. And I didn't get anything. Uh, I could choose to move, move one space, lose a heart, lose two time. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lose a heart. Well, no, I will do that. Uh, move one space, so I'll move here, lose a heart. Lose two time, now I'm down to two, and the game ends, or the, the turn ends. So I'm okay with that, because that was my last card anyway. I only have two to spend, but remember I do get these five cards back for zero cost. And so for that two, I'm going to buy... Well, I guess I'll buy a search for two. I'll buy two re-rolls. Two re-rolls. And that knocks me down to zero. That's the end of the, the planning phase. This goes back up to six. These cards go back into their spot. And now it is the killer's turn. The killer will target anyone in their space. Um, if, if is it one or two, increase. Okay, so you don't do that. Stab, all right, nobody stabs. Then you draw a terror card. Boiling anger, they got a special power. Once during each upkeep, make a horror roll. On a star, no effect on anything but a star increased by one, but uh, this doesn't do anything to the game, but it does give him two extra hearts that I have to remove. So, there's that. So, this is kind of odd. 
Inconyamba runs a little differently when he's not in his own neighborhood. So I'm not quite sure how to play that, but we'll just we'll just go. All right, uh, he drew the he drew the terror card, so now it's my turn. I need to try to get some of these victims to safety, so I'm going to do a focus to try to lower this to two or to one, so I can roll two dice. I just need one star, and I didn't get it, but I will get rid of short rest and weak attack because I can't use those right now and make one of these a star, which will allow me to lower this by one. That gives me a third die, and I lose a time. All right, good. Now, uh, I will do, all I can do is a walk. And I got one star. I will burn a reroll to lose two time to reroll all dice. I'm gonna reroll them all. It's, I, it says all, you have to reroll them all, so I lose that star. But there we go, I got two stars this time which allows me to move two spaces. So I can go one, take this one with me, two. So that was good. And all I've got now is a focus and close call. I'm gonna go ahead and run the focus just for fun. And I got one star, which allows me to lower this one more and I lose a time, so I'm down to two. And that is it. I've got one close call remaining. I get the freebies back and I spend two. I'll spend a sprint. Uh, let's, yeah, I'll do a sprint. And that is the end of my planning phase. It is now time for the, or oh, these got to go back. Focus, walk, close call, focus, short rest, we attack. And this goes back up to six. Killer phase. There's no one here, so he stabs and doesn't hit anybody. Draw a terror card. Take the top card of the village item deck. What's the village? Oh, the village. Village item. Take the top card. Oh, I get a freebie. Uh, candy. During... Discard during the action phase to make a horror roll with five dice. For each star, choose one of the following. Heal two hearts, gain two time, move one space. Ooh, that is a good one. All right, I will hold on to that. And then target me, move. It moves two spaces per boot, so it's going to go one. Well, hold on. The fastest way to get to me is through this space. Remember, the river, he has to cross the river just like anybody else. Oh, he can go one, two. Ooh, one, two. This counts as one path. So he's over here in the escape area. All right, that was the closest way for him to get to me. So, but and then he stabs, but there's nobody there. All right, his turn is over. Um, I am going to play sprint. I want to get these two to safety. Oh, you know what? They can't enter. They won't go in a space with a killer. Ah. That stinks. So I got to get him across the river, but I can only do one at a time. Man. All right. Well, I could use the candy to do some fun stuff. All right. So let's do this. I'm going to do a sprint. Move, I need two stars. Come on. I got two stars. That allows me to move three spaces. So I'm going to go one, two, three three like that back and forth and then I got all of them all across the bridge all right that was good now I'm gonna play a walk I need to get them up here to rescue them and I got two stars which allows me to move two spaces so I can go one two that's good and I could use the candy I don't need to reuse this hold on the candy for each star, you can choose one of the following. Let me do this. I'm going to roll five dice, and I'm hoping for a whole bunch of stars. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> so I can choose. Um, now, the sprint lost me uh, one time, and the walk lost me one time. I'm down to four. I can use this single star to either gain two hearts, gain two time, or move one space. Well... Here's the fun part. I am going to use it to gain two hearts. Why? Because I'll show you. Uh, that puts me back up to max health. This gets discarded. Oh, hold on. Discard during the... Yeah, so I have to discard it. Check out the new RPG and Wargame newsletter. Each week, the tabletop engineer shares news, products, kickstarters, and much more related to the gaming hobby. It's free to subscribe, so check out the link in the video description below to sign up. So, 
on my next turn, when I rescue one victim, I can put it on here, which says move a space, which will allow me to cross the bridge and hopefully do this again. So we'll see. All right, uh, this goes away. That is the end of my turn. I have four time left. I get all these back. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I can buy four cards, but I've only got four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to buy, I'm not ready to deal with, with him yet. Uh, let's do a search. Well, search is risky because you got to get some of those special places. The searches aren't really going to help me. Although, what does bread do? Discard during action and choose one. Three time or move two spaces. I can get the bread at the gingerbread house, which is right there. That's not too far. Plus, I got to go there to get those two victims. So let's let's shoot off for that. I'm going to buy a search for two. And I'll buy a sprint for two. And now I'm down to zero. These cards go back into their spot. This resets to six. And it is now the killer turn. There's no one to stab. Draw a terror card. I was carried like a ragdoll. When the killer moved the killer three spaces towards Grandma's house. Grandma's house is right here. Three spaces would be one, two, three. That's not going to get her there. Or... One, two, three. That's closer. One, two, three. So it's one space away from Grandma's house. Picking up and moving one victim with the killer, if able. There were no, there were no victims. And then I have to draw another event card. All right, draw another. I never, I did draw an event card the first time. It was a discard. The Woodsman, the orange token. The victim closest to you is now the Woodsman. So I'll, I'll replace one with the Woodsman. He will follow you into the killer space. When attacking the killer, the woodsman adds one dice for every three health the killer has. If you save the woodsman, double your victim's save bonus. Oh, that means if I get him to safety. If the woodsman dies while in your space, lose three time. I, I love that. I can use him. I'm not getting rid of him. Okay, uh, that was the terror card that I drew, which drew me the event card. Now it's my turn. So let's rescue somebody. Uh, let's do a walk. I just need one star. And I did get it. So I can move the yellow here, tell her to get lost. She That walk is going to cost me one time. I'm going to put this on... take any top item card. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to take that bread. Because that's a, that's an awesome one. I can use it to get three time or move up to two spaces. And I can discard it during my action phase. Alright. So, the bad news is I'm over here away from the Huntsman. So, let's let's do a sprint to get to Grandma, Gingerbread House. This goes away. Two stars. Perfect. Move three spaces. One, two, three. Now I'm here at a gingerbread house. Um, I'm going to do a search and see what that top card is. Um, this cost me one time, so I'm down to four. The search, I got one star. I would really like to make that a star because then I can search the top two cards. I'm going to get rid of short rest and focus because I don't need those right now. And I'll turn this to a star. And it says take the top two item cards, choose one, place the other on top, face up, or underneath, face down. So one, two. I'm hoping one of these is a weapon. Songbirds, flowers. No, no weapons. <laughs> the flowers may be used once per action phase. If the horror level is two or higher for each, maybe use once per action phase to lower the horror track one. If the horror level is two or higher. Got it. Ooh, that's a good one. Songbirds. If the killer is within two spaces of you, you may spend three time to send the songbirds to attack, doing three damage to the killer, then discard. I'm taking the songbirds. I like that. That's cool. All right, so this one's going to go back on top because I may want that one again. All right, uh, that was the search, and I've still got close call, weak attack, and focus. Let's um, let's save these. Like, I can't do anything with them, so um, these will go down. 
I've got four time to spin. I get the walk back. So now I've got, what, four cards? I've got four. And with this remaining four, I'm going to buy a sprint for two. One, two. And I'm going to buy a close call for one. And that leaves me with one time left, which I can't do anything, but that's okay. So I've got all my cards. These go back in here. Search, short rest, focus, sprint, and walk. Time goes back up to six. And it is now the killer's turn. The killer stabs in his space. There's nobody there. Draws a terror card. He's going to target me and move a boot. A boot will get him two spaces. One, two. Then increase. Okay, so that doesn't really matter. We're not doing that part of the game. All right. Um, I don't even know why I'm tracking this. This doesn't really matter. Okay. They will not go. Well, the woodsman will go with me to, to hurt him. So here's what I'm going to do. It is now my turn. I am going to send the songbirds. I've got three time, uh, six time. If he's within two spaces, one, two, he is. Spend three time. I'm down to three. And discard this. It does three damage to the killer. All right, so one, two, three hearts gone. Get rid of this. And that's that. Now I can bring the huntsman with me if I can get there. If I can get there. Oh, the bread. I can use that to get my time back. I'm down to what, three? Yeah. So I could use the, the bread to get back up, or I could use it to move two spaces and get there automatically. I don't have anything to fight him except for weak attack, which does one, but the woodsman adds one dice for every three health. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he's down to eight. So I would add two extra dice to help do damage. Now, uh, that's a risky one. Let me... Let me do this. I'm going to use the bread to gain three time. That puts me up to six. I am going to use that six to buy critical blow. Or I could buy retaliate and a guard, which would keep him from damaging me. Although he may not damage me. Let's do that. I'm going to do a retaliate for four and a guard for two. And I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I get eight, nine, ten. I get these three back. I didn't use any cards that turn. I just used the birds and the uh, bread. So I've got a full hand of ten cards. I'm going to stop there. That I burnt the zero. No cards to go back into the tableau. This goes back up to six. And now it's the killer turn. Killer, there's nobody here. Draw a terror card. Place two new victims at Grandma's house. Okay. Killer recovers a heart, which is good for me because now that adds another die. And then draw an event card. Furry friends. The woodland creatures realize you are helping keep them safe, but they are making noise wherever you go. The killer moves one space closer to you. If the killer is in your space, increase the bloodlust. He's not in my space. So there we go. Oops. And then it says discard this card. All right. So I'm, I'm surrounded by furry animals. Great. All right. My turn. Let's go kill this guy. I am going to do a walk. And I'm going to hopefully roll a star to take the woodsman with me. The victims won't move into the killer's space. I got two stars. So that will allow me to move two spaces. I don't need to move two. I'm going to move here. That burns a time. All right, let's play this out. I, my damage cards are... I've got Retaliate, but that's only when he attacks me. I've got Weak Attack. And that's it. So I will do the Weak Attack. Remember, the Guard, the, uh, the Woodsman, is going to add plus one for every three health. Well, he's at nine health. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I add three dice to this attack. So I'm rolling six dice. If you save the woodsman, double your victim save bonus. Well, I don't, I'm not going to do that. All right, so come on, stars. And I do I have any re-rolls? I do have a re-roll. I got one, two. I will turn two focuses 
to make this a star. I will get rid of a walk and a short rest to make this a star. And that is four star four health of damage. One, two, three, four. Not bad. I'm down to five time. Uh I need these, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to buy, I'm going to cash in my sprint to raise this by one, so I have six time, and I'm going to buy critical blow. All right, uh, that goes into my hand, yep. All right, I, I, and that's all I can do. So now, these go back into their space. And it is the killer turn. The killer targets anyone in his spot. That's, that's me. But he targets the woodsman. So I have to use my guard card to protect him. The woodsman only has one health. I roll three dice, and I need at least one star to protect him. I could use retaliate. I could use retaliate, which would do damage back to him. Didn't I just buy the critical? Oh, yeah, I did. Let's do retaliate. Let's do retaliate because it will ignore damage and do damage. So hopefully I roll two stars. I rolled nothing. So I will use the close call and burn two time. I'm down to four. Come on. And I got two stars. Two stars ignores all damage from the attack and does two. So I do two damage to him. And that is the end of his turn. Now he does draw a terror card and that's why I kept the guard. This is what I was worried about. He will target the woodsman again. So he targets the woodsman. I will play guard. I need to roll a star, a single star. And I did get it, so he does not kill the woodsman. Now, my turn. All I got is the critical blow. That's it. I really do need two stars here, but I have a reroll. I got one star, and it says reroll any one die. I will roll this, <laughs> and I got a star. So two stars does three damage. One, two, and now we reveal to see if he gets any bonus health. He does not, and Inkanyamba dies like the evil god he is. Oh, that was fun. That one was not as, uh, I don't know. Inkanyamba is not as difficult. I don't think he's as difficult as some of the other monsters. He really he really is dangerous when you use this card in conjunction with um, his land, which is called the Sacred Groves. There, what happens is there's another tracker that increases this and triggers when he's le unleashed or... I don't know, is it leashed or unleashed? I can't remember. There's, a, there's an unleashed and then there's some other way. Depending on where this is, he does extra actions. Because I wasn't playing with that land, that went away, which made him basically just a standard killer type. He was sort of like Hans. Uh, Hans has more health, but Hans doesn't have a lot of really extra special powers. Inkanyama does have special powers, but only when that other land is in effect. So, eh, you know, that was still fun. And I'm, hey, trust me, I'm happy to win a game. But uh, that was very cool. And that, I, let me tell you, the, the, uh, the woodsman came at just the right time. I mean, being able to roll an extra die for every three health, that was huge. Um, otherwise, I would have had to, like, hit him for twos and threes here, and that could have gone on a while. And all the while, he would be hunting me as well. All right, that's all I got. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Thanks for joining me as I play a game of Final Girl. I highly recommend this game. I cannot get enough of this game. It is just so fun. I just heard that Season 3 is in the planning stages. Uh, I don't know if these are rumors, <laughs> but I heard a rumor that the next season, one of the bad guys is possibly going to be a uh, Terminator-type robot with a girl, you know, a time-traveling robot. <laughs> And what was the other one I heard? Uh, it was Terminator and I think that, no, there was another one, but I can't recall. So the company Red Rider Games or Van Rider Games, Van Rider Games um, is definitely, definitely on the move with expanding this game. I fully expect them to add more 
unusual creative things to make the game more fun. Like season two added the desperation die, which I didn't even use this turn. It also added some um, some custom powers that I haven't even reached into yet. Maybe I'll do that on the next game. All right, that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.